The Amazing Mr. Malone. Uh. Operator. Operator, step in the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago. The time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. Tonight, in our study of the cliche, let's take a gander at the shop-worn handsome is as handsome does. As a case in point, I give you Jack Brock. Mr. Brock is the bald-headed gent seated behind the mahogany desk in suite 419 of the Schubert building. He's a private detective by avocation, but his work has given him a faulty perspective on life. He sees everything through a keyhole. Yeah, what is it, Julie? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Brock, but Mrs. Hamilton is here. Well, no, send her in. What are you making a production for? Yes, sir. Uh, what'd you do with the uh, file on her case? I put it in your top drawer. Okay. Anybody call... Co- oh, uh, come in, Mrs. Hamilton. I'll be with you in a minute. That's quite all right. Now, uh, listen, Julie, I don't want to be disturbed for anyone, you understand? Yes. If Harvey calls, tell him to check back later. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you, Mrs. Hamilton. Got that report for you. That's fine. You, uh, wouldn't care for a drink first? No, I wouldn't. I'm just trying to be social. No, please don't put yourself out. Uh, may I hear the report? Sure. Uh, report filed by Ed Sylvester, June 15th, 1951. Subject, Paul Hamilton. I picked up Mr. Hamilton at 9 a.m. And... Do we have to go through all that? Well, you... you all start... I'd like to know is whether my suspicions are well-founded. If you mean, is your husband seeing some cutie on his side? The answer is yes. And the girl's name? Eve Fenton. Eve Fenton. Uh huh. Is she in love with Paul? Is she? In lo- <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard in years. Well, I wish you'd explain the joke to me. Well, the stain don't know what the word love means. She's gone with a hundred guys in the last year. What does she do? Whoever she can. Right now, she's promoting your husband. Since April, he's given her over $70,000 worth of jewelry. I see. If I was you, I'd uh, give him a dose of his own medicine. I don't follow you, Mr. Brock. Oh, well, you're a good-looking woman. Thank you. Why don't you show him two can play that game? Find yourself a little partner? Am I to understand you're volunteering your services? You could do a lot worse. I'm not a bad guy. I've only got your word for that. <laughs> well, can't rule a guy out trying. If there's anything I can do for you in the future. I rather doubt it. Well, you never know. Someday you may be up against it. If it comes, give me a jingle. I uh, think you've got my number. <laughs> Hello, Malone. Well, if it isn't Lady Hamilton. I'm not disturbing you. Not nearly enough. Come on in, lover. Let me take a coat. No, don't bother. I can't stay long. You know, Eileen, sometimes I think you don't trust me. Sometimes I don't think I do. Now, you know there's no more harm in me than in a cobra. Sit down. Do I dare? I never make a pitch for a woman who's in love with her husband. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Paul's got himself involved. How do you know? I consulted a private detective named Jack Brock. You didn't go to Brock? Mm-hmm. I ought to put you across my knee. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Oh, Malone, please. I'm, I'm in no mood for clowning. Who's the girl? Eve Fenton. Eve Fenton? Mm-hmm. Never heard of her. Unfortunately, Paul has. Well, what do you want me to do? Start suit for a divorce? Oh, no, don't be ridiculous. You know how I feel about him. Yeah, he appeals to your maternal instinct. When are you going to stop playing mama? That's not funny, Malone. Well, it's the truth. If you didn't watch over him like a baby... You don't understand. What's there to understand? Of course, Paul is weak, but it's not his fault. 
He never had to stand on his own two feet. His family always had money. Gee, that's sad. I guess I was lucky to be born poor. Now, huh? look. Okay, okay. If you don't want a divorce, what did you have in mind? I thought maybe you could talk to him. You want me to tell him about the birds and the bees and the flowers if he doesn't know by Malone, now? Malone, please. All right, Arlene. But I got a hunch it'll be like talking to myself. I'll brief you later on the dialogue. <laughs> Say one thing for you, Malone. You've got more nerve than any eight people I know. Now look, Paul, this wasn't my idea. I don't like to butt in on a family squabble. Well, what do you call what you're doing? Uh, come to think of it, you're right. But you know how Arlene feels about you. Yes, she doesn't trust me to come in out of the rain. It isn't that. Then what is it? This little girl you're tied up with, Eve Fenton. Suppose we leave her out of this. I don't see how we can. She's in this mess up to her lovely neck. She's a bad dame, Paul. You better watch that tongue, Malone. Look, I've seen the report. She's a no good... Shut up. Wait. I, uh, I guess I asked for that. You certainly did. Now get out. Okay, Paul, but my mother taught me to turn the other cheek. I may be back later to give you a crack at it. I hate to heckle, Paul, but would you mind telling me what this is all about? Eve, I want to talk to you. It doesn't matter to you that I wanted to go to the cat club. Do we have to go to a night spot every time we go out? I know, I know. You hate to see me enjoy myself. Honey, it's not that. What are we stopping here for? I told you I wanted to talk to you. Well, find some other spot. This place gives me the creep. No. Listen, do you think I'm going to sit here? Please, Why please. You... My wife's lawyer dropped by to see me this afternoon. A man named John J. Malone. So? So he said a couple of things about you. Well, what do you want me to do? Tell me they're not true. How can I tell you if I don't know what he said? Well, he hinted that... What? That there were other men in your life. No. I didn't let him get away with it. Well, bully for you. Please, Eve, don't joke. You know how mad I am for you. What's the matter, baby? Little Evie hurt your feelings? Eve, I'm serious. Okay, Paul, you're asking for it. In my book, you're a first-class schmo. Eve. Eve. Mm. You don't get that hurt tone out of your voice. I'm going to be sick. Can't you act like a grown man for a change instead of a baby? What? You don't need a girl. You need a mother. And all your money isn't enough to make me take on the job. If you don't know what you're saying. Oh, don't be dull. I've been dying to say it ever since the first night we met. I'll kill you for ah, this. Ah, uh, keep your hand to yourself. What? Where'd you get that gun? Been in my purse all along. I figured someday baby might get rough and Mama might have to slap him down. I'll start the car. It's time you went back to the nursery. Hello, Eve. What are you doing here, Barry? I was waiting for you. Well, from now on, do it outside. My darling, I believe you're out of sorts. I don't want you hanging around. Is that understood? Well, there's no need to be huffy. After all, oh, Eve, shut I... up. You make me sick. Well, you didn't feel that way when I lined up Paul Hamilton. Say, I'm glad you mentioned that because the party's over. What on earth are you talking about? I packed him in tonight. You didn't? Didn't I? You're lying. Now admit it. All right, I'm lying. You feel better now? If you think you're going to double-cross me, Miss Benton, you've got another guest coming. Don't be a fool. I planned the whole thing. I did all the work. You I... did all the work. Look, little man, this may come as a shock, but you don't know what work is until you've spent a couple of hours with Mr. Hamilton. I've met dull people in my You're time. You're not going to do this to me, Eve. I won't let oh, you... Oh, drop dead. You hear me? I won't let you... Barry! Stop it! I can't! Barry! Uh-huh. Four in the morning, Lieutenant. Well, naturally, I wouldn't think of calling any other time. Uh, look, do you know a lady named Arlene Hamilton? Why? Well, she's going to wind up with a lot of time on her hands. Hey, that's pretty good. What are you babbling about? Well, you know, Hamilton, time on your hands. It's a joke. You get it? Yeah, all over me. What's this about Arlene Hamilton? She knocked off a dame named Eve Fenton tonight. Eve Fenton? Uh-huh. 
When I think of that waste of talent... Let's see if I understand you, Brooks. You understand me, all right. Where's Mrs. Hamilton now? Now, where else would she be? You coming over? You're darn right. Tell her I'll be there in 20 minutes. Try and make it 15. It's been a week since I was amazed. I don't know if I can hold out much longer. I'll be seeing you, Counselor. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Sunday evening brings you a trio of top adventures over NBC. The Saint, Martin Kane, Private Eye, and Mr. Moto. Three programs designed to bring you mystery, suspense, and high adventure. Tom Conway is featured as Simon Templer, alias The Saint, a fellow with an eye for excitement and the ability to get himself into plenty of trouble. Martin Kane, Private Eye, is a new addition to our detective panel, starring popular stage and motion picture actor Lloyd Nolan as Martin Kane. Martin Kane will be in for plenty of action this Sunday on the first show of his new series. Also for your Sunday night listening, Mr. Moto, ace security agent, aids the occupation forces in their constant fight against those who would destroy world peace. And here's a tuning reminder. Dimension X has moved its broadcast time and day and will be heard in a new series of programs beginning July 12th. Today, tomorrow, every day, there's top radio entertainment over this, your NBC station. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Well, that's the way it goes. Some nights can be murder. And this one was. Twenty minutes after I learned Eve Fenton had been folly done in, I was down at headquarters. And when I walked in, strangely enough, I was greeted by Lieutenant Brooks with open arms. Then I noticed between them he held an axe. Well, come on in, Malone. You're just in time. Hey, will you put that thing down? Sure, just lay your head on the desk for a second. Are you nuts? You can kill a man with that. You know, that's roughly what I had in mind. Unfortunately, Mrs. Hamilton beat me to it. Is that the weapon used on Eve Fenton? Uh-huh. Well, if you think Arlene Hamilton was the party who wielded it, you're crazy. Well, then that makes two of us. Mrs. Hamilton agrees with me. What? Take a look at this. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you could read. Confession by Arlene Hamilton. I, Mrs. Paul Hamilton, do hereby confess to my own free will that on the evening of June... She didn't sign it. No? Take a look at the next page. Now, look, Brooks. You're not going to get away with these third-degree methods. Oh, how you do go on. Well, if you think I'm going to permit it for one second... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I lost my head. Oh, that's all right, Malone. We got a signed carbon in the fire. Why, you no good that double... Temper, temper, temper. When did Arlene sign this? Five minutes after I phoned you, she told Sussman she wanted to dictate a statement. That was it. Didn't you tell her I was on my way over? I think that's what prompted it. Now, listen, Sidney, I want to talk to her. Sussman, bring in Mrs. Hamilton. What's the matter with him? He hasn't said a word to me in weeks. Oh, well, maybe he doesn't recognize you since you had your suit pressed. As a matter of fact, I've been having a little... Excuse me, the sergeant... Oh, come on in, Arlene. What are you doing here, Malone? Well, you sent for me. Didn't they tell you I changed my mind? You're going to need someone to represent you. No, no, I won't. I'll sign a confession. Look, Arlene, let's stop kidding each other. You didn't kill Eve Fenton. Where's your motive? She took Paul away from me. So you grabbed an axe and made like George Washington. Yes. Then why weren't your fingerprints on it? How do you know they weren't? Were they? No, she wiped them off. Then that proves she didn't do it. Oh, that's what I love about you, Sloan. Your logical mind. Look, Sidney, can't you see she's protecting someone? No. Who? Her husband. That's not true. Why should I? Because you've got a mother complex and you think Paul needs protecting. Come to think of it, you may be right. What do you mean? The last time we had a little talk, he slapped me down. Maybe it's time I had my turn at bats. I'll let you know if I score. <laughs> Just a second. Hello, Paul. What do you want, Malone? Well, that's no way to greet an old friend of the family. I've got nothing to say to that's you. That's all right. I've got more than enough dialogue for us both. Are you going to get out of here? I just saw Arlene. You know, she confessed to Eve's murder. I'm not at all surprised. Neither am I. I figure she's shielding someone. Don't you? No. She killed Eve. Why should she? Because she was jealous of him. Now, that's something I'll never understand. Here you have the greatest wife in the she world. She was never a wife to me. She was a... I know. 
A mother. Do you know what it means to have someone watch over you day and night, to check whether or not you have your handkerchief when you go out, and if you've got an umbrella when it rains? Maybe you need it. Don't be smart. All right, I'll grant you Arlene's a domineering type, but don't you see what she's trying to do for you now? No. Well, why do you think she confessed? She thinks she'll kill Eve. And why would I do that? Maybe Eve got tired of you. If that's all you've got to say, Malone... No, it isn't. Well, I don't want to hear any more. You're going to. Unless we can dig up another suspect, your wife's going to the chair. Now, if you didn't kill Eve, who did? Who were some of the other men in her life? There was no one else. Don't be a jerk. There must have been hundreds. Eve could never Get be... Get out! You know, Paul, you did that once before, and I think I was pretty wonderful the way I held my temper. And I ain't so now. Honest. Why, you... Don't bother getting up, old man. I can find my way out. <laughs> Me? Yeah, I wonder if you could help me out. Uh, where's the Belmont on? Oh, it's the building I just came out of. Now, that's a coincidence for you. You live there? Why? Because I was wondering if you might know a character named Barry Phillips. What's the meaning of this? Oh, don't tell me your hand. Well, it certainly is a small world. Who are you? Brock's my name, Jack Brock. I'm a private investigator. A what? Don't you ever listen to the radio? They call them private eyes. What do you want with me? Suppose we go someplace where we can have a drink, huh? Now, I you know can say fine. anything you want to right here. Okay. A lady came into my office some time back. Her name was Arlene Hamilton. So? So it seemed like her husband was seeing a cutie on the side. A little girl named... Um... Now, what was her name again? How would I know? Well, who should know better? You introduced it to him. You're insane. I never even heard of Eve Fenton. Did I say that was her name? Uh, yes. Funny, I don't remember it. Look, Mr... Uh, Brock. B-R-O-C-K. Well, if you're quite through... No, 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 I... I'm not. Imagine my surprise when I opened the paper this morning and read about this Eve Fenton being knocked off. And then I noticed a very strange oversight. Did you? Yeah. The papers didn't mention 70,000 bucks worth of jewelry she got from Paul Hamilton. What do you suppose happened to it? I have no idea. Well, I have. I figured the killer took it. You've got your nerve. Now, nerves, don't huh? get me wrong, Barry. I would in his place, especially if Eve double-crossed me. What do you mean by that? Just what it sounded like. Now, I know a fence who would take the stuff off our hands for 30 cents and a dollar. Get out of my way. You won't do better elsewhere. 11,000 bucks apiece ain't to be sneezed at. Are you going to get out of my way? Okay, Barry. Don't say later. I didn't give you a chance. But if I can't do business with you, I'll have to find myself another customer. Take care of yourself, fella. Yeah? Uh, let me talk to John J. Malone, please. Speaking, who's this? Jack Brock. Oh. I take it you heard of me. Unfortunately. <laughs> You're a pretty funny guy, Malone. I don't think Bob Hope has much to worry about. What's on your mind? You're uh, representing Arlene Hamilton, aren't you? So? So did she tell you I did a little work for her? Yeah. Well, since I concluded the job, a couple of things have come to my attention. Such as? Well, I find it wasn't Eve Fenton's idea originally to clip Paul. She was working with a guy. I figured as much. Well, figuring is one thing. I'm the boy who can prove it. Now, suppose uh, Eve double-crossed this partner of hers. How? Could be any number of ways. Maybe she dissolved the partnership. Maybe she refused to divvy up with him. That's a possibility. Did you know uh, Paul Hamilton gave Eve $70,000 worth of ice while he was gone with her? No. Well, he did. And the cops didn't find it in her apartment. What do you make of that? All right, Brock, what's the pitch? You're not telling me all this because of my big brown eyes. Well, you notice I didn't tell you the guy's name. That's going to cost you five grand. You got delusions of grandeur. Oh, your client can afford it. This thing can save her life. Maybe she doesn't want her life saved. Didn't you hear she confessed? No. When did that happen? A couple of hours ago. Well, I'll tell you what I do. Uh, I'll give you uh, the guy's name and address for a thousand. Five hundred? You got a deal. When will I get the money? As soon as I verify. Well, um, it's Barry Phillips. Barry Phillips? Yeah, I listen to Belmont. And now, about the dome alone, I got your word for it? Such as it is. What do you mean? I guess I'm as bad as you are, Brock. But don't let it ruin your faith in all men. It's just two of us who can't be trusted. Yes? 
I'm looking for Barry Phillips. Well? Well, looks like I made it. I wasn't aware that I invited you in. I'll forgive the oversight. Now, look, Mr. Malone. Oh. Heard of me? Naturally. I never miss you on the radio. Uh, your first name's Ted, isn't it? That's pretty cute. You ought to be in radio yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Now, what can I do for you? For one thing, you can accompany me down to police headquarters. Why should I do that? Just because you're the considerate type. I got very sensitive hands, and you wouldn't want me to ruin them by slugging you. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Don't underestimate me, Barry. This is my day for hitting people. I started with Paul Hamilton, and I just as soon finish with you. You're a lot smaller. Oh! <laughs> I'm back. Hey, stop and hide the valuables. That man's here again. You know, if someone heard you, they think you weren't glad to see me. Now, I wonder how they'd get that impression. Listen, you schlemiel, I got this whole case figured out. Oh, you're kind of slow, Malone. I had it figured out hours ago. You don't really believe that phony confession Arlene Hamilton made? I most certainly do. Where's she now? Home. Judge McAllister granted bail 20 minutes ago. Well, I got a hunch that's the last you've seen of her. Oh, she'll be back. I doubt it. You see, I know who killed Eve Fenton. Do tell. Yeah. It was a little boy named Barry Phillips. Are you out of your mind? Did you find any jewelry in Eve's apartment? No. Well, Paul gave her $70,000 worth. Where did it go to? Oh, you tell me. You're the one who's amazing. The killer took it. Robbery was the motive for this murder. It's as simple as that. Eve and Barry were partners, and he thought she double-crossed him. Uh, where's this Barry Phillips now? In his room at the Belmont. I slugged him. Now, what do you want to do that for? Well, look, Lieutenant, for 30-odd years, I've been looking for the one man in this town I could lick. Today, I found him. Wouldn't I be a fool to let him get away? <laughs> Right down the end of the hall. Are you sure this Barry Phillips will be here? Positive. Oh, you should have seen the writer let him have it. was a beaut. Yeah, yeah, you must be training on how to call. Listen, counselor, all I got is... Save it for later. This the place? Yeah. Oh, where is he? Hit those lights. What did I tell you? When Malone socks them, they stay socked. All right, Barry, it's time to get up. You got company. Barry. What's the trouble? I don't know. Get out of the way. Well, he's dead. But I only hit him once. You don't know your own strength. Did you ever consider fighting professionally? They could bill you as kill him alone. That's one title you really deserve. All right, killer, let's go. You're listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. Every time the cost of living index goes up 1%, people must spend an additional $2 billion per year. This same inflation strikes at defense, too. In the next two years, defense costs are estimated at around $140 billion. If inflation raises these costs by only 1%, we, you and I, the public, will be paying $1,400,000,000 a year extra. No one man and no act of Congress can stem this tide of inflation, this I-bomb whose effects are more widespread than those of the atom bomb itself. But if we all act together, we can win. What can I do, you ask? First, don't buy anything you don't actually need. Second, don't buy or sell anything that's over the established ceiling price. And third, put every extra dollar you have into defense bonds, bonds that help our country stay strong financially. Sign up for payroll savings where you work, first thing tomorrow. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. I don't know why things like this always happen to me, but I suppose I shouldn't complain. If I didn't, I'd be minus a job. Now it looked like I was going to lose even more. And while I retired to a neutral corner, Lieutenant Brooks counted Barry out. Well, he's dead, all right. You know, I certainly got to hand it to you, Counselor, and wouldn't I love to? But I tell you, Lieutenant, I barely touched him. Oh, you must pack a wallop like Joe Lewis. If you escape the chair, maybe I can get you to sign a testimonial for the Everlast people. Help me turn them over. Uh, if you don't mind. Oh, come on, Malone. This is no time for you to go delicate. Uh-oh. I was afraid of this. Huh? Uh, 
What do you make of this little round hole in his back? It ain't a lifesaver. Well, maybe it is, because it sure saves your life. He was shot. And I didn't kill him. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Or maybe you forgot. After you hit him, maybe you pumped a slug in him just to make sure he was out. Don't talk like a jerk. Oh, I hate to see such an opportunity go to waste. Listen, Lieutenant. I got it all figured out. Oh, that's what I love about you, Malone. You're like the U.S. mail. Nothing stops I tell you, I see it all now, and I know who killed him. All right, who? The same party who killed E. Fenton. Can you latch on to Jack Brock? The private detective? Yeah. What's he got to do with it? I'll this? tell you later, but we'll need him and Paul Hamilton. Now what about your client, Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, by all means, let's have her, too. I always do my best work when there's a lady in the house. Look, Lieutenant, I think I'm entitled to an explanation. You have absolutely no right of to bring me in. Hasn't. You've got to let him go, Lieutenant. Well, that raises a problem. Will you keep out of this, Arlene? I can look after myself. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I only meant... I uh, hate to interrupt, but can a stranger get a word in that door? Yeah, yeah, of course, Mr. Brown. Well, what are we waiting for, anyway? Oh, why, naturally, the start of our show. And here he comes now. Hello, folks. Well, it's about time, Malone. Your audience is getting restless. Well, we won't hold him long. At least not all three. What are you driving at? I don't know whether you heard, Brock, but there's been another murder... Anyone I know? Yeah, someone you know quite well. Barry Phillips. Remember you gave me his name on the phone? I gave you his name? <sighs> yeah, I'm glad you said that because I promised you five bills for the information and this sort of gives me an out. Right, Paul? Why ask me? Well, I was wondering whether you saw any fallacy in my logic. I'm afraid I hadn't been listening. You should have. Because you've got a big stake in this. I don't see how. Well, Paul, you killed Barry Phillips and he fenced No. Yes, he did, lover. You couldn't do everything for him. There were a couple of things he finally did for himself, and both of them were murder. Congratulations, Paul. Today you are a man. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. We've finished eating, so whenever you're ready. Uh... Whenever I'm ready for what? Well, don't you want to ask me any questions? Not particularly. Well, uh, don't you want to know why Paul killed Eve Fenton? Oh, that's pretty obvious. He wanted to get even. The dame played him for a sucker, and his ego couldn't take it. Ah. Well, uh, you're probably wondering why he killed Barry Phillips. Oh, for the same reason he killed Eve. Barry was in on the plot to clip him. Oh. Well, uh... Well, no doubt you're puzzled about what happened to the missing jewel. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Paul took it after he killed Eve, just so it shouldn't be a total loss. You saw all that? But don't tell me I've amazed the amazing Mr. Malone. Oh, in that case, I'm going home and cut my throat. I've got nothing else to live for. Good night, Counselor. <laughs> story of the boy who tried alcohol for the first time. Surprisingly, the only teetotaler in the party wound up half shot. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Good night.